clue. Are there any detectives out there? Any sleuths? Anyone that enjoys listening to a mystery, a puzzle, a dilemma? This is based on a true story, an actual fact. I'm staying in a heart in a, a posh hotel where all the settees and the armchairs are made of leather. Wow. So here I am, sipping slowly in my glass of coke with ice, no lemon. When his man turns up in a t-shirt and tracksuit bottoms, he buys a drink and he says to the duty manager, who's Polish and speaks very good English, and he says, um, there was a person, there was a couple booking him tomorrow night for the single night called, called Ducati. So he spelled out, um, I would like to leave a gift for them. Um, I don't know them, but I'm sure I would, I would, I'm sure I'd get on with them once I started talking to them. He mentions her name, Rachel, but doesn't mention Rachel's partner's name. So I'm earwigging on the conversation because it's not a public it's not a public conversation. It's a public conversation. So I'm wondering, okay then, why would you leave a gift for someone you don't know? For someone you'd never met? I find this is peculiar and it's slightly odd and to a degree it can be construed as scary and frightening because he mentioned her but not her partner. Now let's look at it from the worst abstract scenario angle possible. Maybe he is her stalker. Maybe he, he fantasizes about her. And the hotel, who I will not mention, has agreed to do this. But the point is, look at the worst scenario. Say he is a stalker. Say he is a fantasist. And he's expecting her to be overly delighted and ecstatic with his gift. But it turns out that she is disgusted that the hotel is acted as ambassador, emissary, for this turd. And so this hotel is thrown into a lawsuit, who's acting on behalf of her stalker, a fantasist, a rapist. But you can understand where I'm coming from, because at the end of the day, he didn't say his name. But obviously he's in some sort of reality loop. Because who in their right mind goes to a hotel for a beer, then gives the, the duty manager this weird and outrageous request to a woman he's never met. Now, he's never met them. But then ask, you, ask yourself this question. How does he know they're booked in for one night on the 29th of this month? How would you know if someone's going to be booked in if you're professing not to know them? So all you detectors out there, all you sleuths, how would you go about investigating this oddity, this strange man? Now, he claimed to be a teacher, but he didn't specify what he teaches. He's also claimed to have lived in Dartmouth for 25 years. Then, all of a sudden, out of, out of nowhere, once he finished talking to the duty manager, walks over to the bar and says, Hi, my name is Russell. And I'm thinking, OK, his name is Russell. 
Maybe he's related to Russell Brand. That's a peculiar, that, that is a peculiar guy. That's <laughs> man of weirdos. So in this Russell, this guy in his hometown, he is acting similar. But what I would like to emphasize is that he doesn't know her. He's never met her. So how does he know she that she is booked in with her partner for the 29th for a single night? Now, I don't know exactly what he's asked the um, receptionist and the duty manager to give her because it was unfortunately out of earshot. But it's weird. It is weird. It's it's. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, after talking to the barman, he started talking to someone else. He you knows something. The only other person in the lounge was me. He he chose not to talk to me. Now, was this because I have a walking stick, an NHS grey walking stick, on my right side? And maybe he doesn't like disabled people. Maybe he has a problem with disabled people. Maybe he's a closet bigot. Who knows? Who really gives a damn? But I'm intrigued though. Everyone who's, who manages to listen to my audio, which should appear on my YouTube channel, if you're wanting to post or email your evaluations, any information you put together to my email address, I would be willing to put your documents upload to my website and call it detective work concerning Russell. And I'd link my video and audio to that particular session. And so all your works can be uploaded for free and others may want to know who this Russell is. How to say, how does he know they're going to be booked in if he doesn't know them? And why does he mention her name and not her partner's name? So, I may be just talking out my ass, so to speak. But, what happens if he, if he is a stalker? He's a fan of that. He believes that they were in a relationship. Well... And he did say, well, he did buy a drink. Then I questioned, did he drive a car? Because he turned up in a hotel, dry, and it had been raining all day. So obviously he owns a vehicle, a murder transport, which keeps his hair dry and his clothing dry. So I don't buy a bike. And then he buys another drink. I'm not too sure what he bought. It didn't hang on, it didn't look like a glass of coke because they only do two types of glasses for the coke. A large one, which will be a pint and it wasn't a pint he was to carry, or a small one. Short, narrow, and he wasn't carrying that, so did he have another alcoholic drink include App do he had to point? And if so, was he now over the limit? And is he safe to drive home? So, there you have it. The information I heard, he said he's, he's, he's a teacher, but didn't specify what he teaches or who he teaches. He's lived in here in, in Darwin for 25 years. Then another guy turned up who's doing a, a guide, a guided tour with a lot of Australians, because they had a big meeting in the hotel, and he starts talking to him. And I get the impression he's a fisher of information. I mean, he could have quite easily gone on the website of this hotel, which will be named nameless and checked out the events and by getting events information he can use the information to find out 
the person who's running the guide, the organisation, this gathering. Because they all drive, they all drove down from London that same day, which is an uneasy feat, and you stayed the night, and would go back to London the next day, the twenty ninth. Again, which was a very long journey. Yes, it's a huge journey to make there and back, and even to stay over for one night. So there you have it, guys and girls. What is he? Who is he? Maybe he's a journalist. Maybe he's a rapist. Maybe he has mental problems. Maybe he's a schizophrenic. Uh, maybe he's a private detective. Maybe he's a police officer. Undercover. Or a murderer. It can be anything. Because he didn't specify who and what he is. So, let all your minds race through this information I've given you, which isn't too much, but I feel it's enough to allow you to investigate who he is and what he is. And what's, yes, here it comes, what's his agenda? What is his reason for doing this? And so, I will leave it there for now, and I do hope you've enjoyed this audio. Stay tuned, I'm Isaac Peter, and you can always find the uh, website. It's www.audiopros.co.uk So, if you want your ideas concerning Russell and the strange woman, the mystery woman. Email away and I shall upload my stuff and I'll email you when stuff's online. As long as the information's clean, no rough words. And go from there. So take care and enjoy. Bye bye.